So the first thing I'm going to do, um, I've got the ballast back in the car. I've uh, I've got repeat repeatable measurements now on the front wheel cambers, um, and I think I seem to think the thing people aim for two point five degrees at the front negative, obviously. This front corner is bang on 2.5, but I'm repeatedly getting measurements of 3.5 on this one. So I'm going to wind this one in a bit, get it a little bit closer, um, even though the horse is going to change, I guess, but let's have a quick go um, while we're here. Okay, the camber's probably the most awkward bit to adjust on the fly, because um, you've got to separate the top ball joint from this taper. And doing that without destroying ball joints, I find really difficult. I'm just not patient enough for that type of work. But the old trick of kind of striking the side of the steering arm. Um, so I just put that on there, gave it a sharp tap with a hammer, and that's enough to shock the, the taper open, which is good. Um, I think what I'm going to do is probably just buy a bunch of these to have in the toolbox when I'm on the road. And then if I do need to make a camber adjustment. Um, I don't have to worry about protecting the boot or whatever. I can just get a splitter in there and smash the fuck out of it. Um, that's a very Kyle way of doing things. But yeah, I managed to get this one off in one piece, so that's all good. So now all I need to do is release that lock nut, wind this in. I think I read somewhere it was approximately a quarter of a degree per turn. So I'll try with four turns to get, I need to knock a degree off this. I'll try with four turns, um, bolt it back together and see, see how far off I am. So there we go. Uh, thank you to whoever wrote whatever I read, but you're bang on. Four wines in, uh, four wines out. Sorry, took one degree of camber off. So you can see I'm at two and a half degrees there now, um, which is the same. Oh, uh, within. Ooh, sorry about that. Um, which is the same or as close as it can be get got with the adjustments that we have available to. This side here, you can see it's a little bit less actually on this side, but yeah, with only having um, quarter degree adjustments, that's as close as it's going to get. So yeah, happy with the camber now. I'm just going to lock off this lock nut so I don't forget. Okay, that's that locked off. And get the strings out now. Just check the um, check the toe angle. Now that I've changed the camber and now that I've got ballast in it. Remember when I was in the garage at Donington, I took all my measurements without ballast in, so I'm intrigued to see how different that will be. I shall report back. Quick talk through what I actually do with the strings. Um, I didn't really fancy talking through this in the garage at Donny because I was already self-conscious enough by talking to myself with a phone in my hand. Um, but this is my safe space. So really what we've got, you might not be able to see it on the cameras, but we've got strings going, connecting these poles front to rear. Uh, you'll see some kits where the poles mount to the car. I do have one of those kits. Um, there are advantages to mounting it to the car because it means between adjustments, you can roll the car backwards and forwards. And the string box, you know, stays the same. Um, and rolling it back and forward is important for sort of settling the suspension and the tyres um, between adjustments. But just to be quick, because uh, I'm just taking a measurement tonight, really, uh, I've just set it up statically on axle stands. The next job is to... The strings... The strings will always be parallel to each other because these poles have got grooves machined in them. So as long as I use the same grooves, the strings are guaranteed to be parallel. But then what I need to do is make sure the strings are also parallel to the center line of the car. Now, because the Caterham and well, many sports cars have a slightly different track width, at least I think they do, do they? Yeah, they must do. Yeah, let's just say they do. Um, then I need to take measurements from the kind of stub of the axle on each between the axle and the string without touching the string. Then I get a measurement. Um, so let's say that's whatever that works out as 120 mil. I then need to make sure it's also 120 mil at this side. 
And if it's not, I shuffle the poles around until it is, and then I do the same at the back, backwards and forwards a few times to make sure I've got an even gap between this corner and that corner. And then the gap will be different at the back because it's a wider track, but they should still be the same as each other on the rear, if that makes sense. Once I've got that, I know that the string box is parallel with the center line of the car. And at that point, it's just a case of measuring the distance between the front leading edge of the rim and the trailing edge of the rim. If the front edge is further away, then it's towing in. If the front edge is close to the string, it's towing out. Um, and that's why you'll see measurements in millimeters most of the time when people are DIYing this. Um, so, you know, you'll say, oh, I want two mil of two out or whatever. Um, whereas the fancy gadgets, the laser machines and stuff, they'll all, all often convert that to degrees. You can obviously convert it to degrees yourself if you know the size of the rim and maths. Um, but just for the sake of argument um, and simplicity, just use millimetres as your reference, it doesn't really matter. Um, and then we, yeah, so the idea is with the Dedian tube rear, it's always going to be somewhere close to neutral toe. And then I want to have a little bit of toe out at the front. Um, between kind of one and two mil probably across the whole axle is probably what I'll start with. So very close to neutral. Then I've always got options to tow it out a little bit more or, or tow it in a bit, depending on what I want to do. So that's my plan. Just going to check it and then I'm going to go to bed. Okay, so just to demonstrate, probably terribly with one hand, but this is a rear wheel. So I'm expecting this to be roughly toe neutral. Um, so, sorry, really hard with one hand. So I'm going to get the ruler as close to the string as I can. I look over it and you see we're at 97 mil, so that's the distance. And if we measure over this side, um, see we're also at 97 mil. Um, so that demonstrates that this is toe neutral as we would expect. And it's usually a good sanity check that you've got the strings right as well, if you know that one of the axles is supposed to be neutral. Uh, this side should be exactly the same. 97. Can't touch the string like I just did. 97. So I'm happy with that. So now onto the front. One thing to note with the front, obviously, the position of the steering wheel is really important. And it's not always the easiest thing to get it straight. You know, there's different interpretations of straight. So the big thing to focus on is the total toe out across the full axle. So if you're aiming for one degree out on each side, really what you're looking for is two degrees out across the whole axle. So if this corner was four degrees out and that one was two degrees in, the net result is the same. It's still two degrees out either side. It just means your steering wheel's probably not quite straight. And obviously you don't want to get that stupidly off because then you end up with your steering wheel on the piss as you're going down the road, which is really annoying. But then again, to contradict myself slightly, I know from you know from when I've been messing around with the Lotus, it's actually the rear toe angle that seems to affect the steering being off, which sounds sounds counterintuitive, it sounds stupid, but if you imagine the the, the rears are off, you don't have a steering wheel to kind of subliminally compensate for that so the car's going to crab down the road slightly which is why you're, you always have the steering wheel on an angle so yeah that's just something i've learned you know just because it's the steering doesn't necessarily mean it's the the front axle that's the problem but anyway on this car the rears are not a factor so um yeah long and long story short try to make sure that you're aiming for a measurement across the axle obviously in a perfect world you get the steering wheel perfectly straight and you would have two degrees out at either side as you're expecting but, you know, don't freak out if it doesn't quite work out that way. You know, the, the, the steering wheel might be out by a, an amount that your hands, hands and eyes just wouldn't perceive on the road. All right, just about to wrap it up now. I've actually made a fair few uh, adjustments on the front. Um, it looks like the ballast had a bigger, you know, bigger impact than I, uh, than I realised it would. Um, I guess it makes sense, you know, the relative weight of the car, um, the K-trims are pretty soft. I guess it does have quite an impact on the geometry of the suspension. So yeah, I had to dial it quite a bit more toe out to get it back to where I wanted it. Um, I had a really missed opportunity here um, to sound like I actually know what I'm talking about because 
when I took the car out into the paddock at Donington and I just drove it around the car park for a little bit, I wasn't sure if it was my mind playing tricks on me, but it did seem a little bit less sharp at the front, like it was a little bit lethargic to turn in. I just put it down to, you know, just, well, all in my head type thing. But that is one of the reasons why I wanted to recheck it in the garage with ballast. And the fact that it was towing in a little bit after the changes I made at Donny, that that would weigh up. It's just a shame I didn't say that at the start of the video so that you all actually think I know what I'm doing. Um, it's easy to say in retrospect, but yeah, we'll we'll see how it feels on, on Friday, hopefully.